Let's build the toggle or the switch next. Now the toggle is a little bit trickier than the other components. However, behind the scene is really just a checkbox that is either giving us a true or false value. First of all, let's set up the file structure. I'll create a new toggle component. It's module CSS file. and load the component in our home page. As I mentioned just now, the toggle is simply a checkbox under the hood. Let's create a checkbox for now. We will need a label and also an input element with a type of checkbox. Now the label requires a unique ID and we can't really just write a hard coder ID here because we're going to reuse this toggle component over and over again in our app. So we need a way to uniquely generate an ID. Thankfully, React has just got a tool for us and it is a hook code use ID. So basically, this hook function will always generate a unique ID for us that we can use anywhere that we like. In this case, we'll put it as the ID of our checkbox. And now if we take a look at the DOM, we can see that our input element is assigned to a unique ID string. Now I would like to insert some content to our toggle component. Let's define the props for our toggle component. We'll destructure the children and we'll define a value prop, which will be a boolean. If it is true, that means the toggle is on and false when the toggle is off. And we'll put the children inside a spam element within a label and also bind the value to the check attribute of our input element. So now if we go back to the home page and assign true to the value prop, you can see that in a browser, our checkbox is now ticked. Let's quickly put a value prop inside our prop types and pass the remaining props into the input element. And we'll create a dummy reactive variable back in the home component to handle the checked status of the checkbox. Since we're passing all the props into the input element, that means we can start to listen to the change event. And when the checkbox is changed, we want to set the checked state into the input's checked attribute. All right, now we've got a working checkbox, we can finally have some fun time styling the component. And just a heads up, if CSS is not your forte, the CSS code might look a little bit scary, but I'll try my best to explain what's going on. Now, as a lazy developer, I didn't really want to write this component from scratch. Especially, there are so many amazing UI libraries out there that can do a better job than me writing the component from scratch. So instead of reinventing the wheel, I simply go to Google to look for something to copy, whoops, I mean, to inspire myself. Since there are a lot more Tailwind CSS resources out there online compared to Windy CSS, so I'll search for an inspiration based on Tailwind CSS. And then I found this amazing website that has exactly the component that I had in my head. What a coincidence. So I have decided to not copy, but to take this inspiration and make it into our own. Now we gotta understand and break down the code before we can make it into our own. First of all, notice that there's a class called SR only, which stands for screen reader only, and that will make the element not visible unless the user is using a screen reader. And that means the appearance of our toggle is controlled by the div followed right after the input element. And the span is just showing the label of the toggle. Now, first of all, let's copy the classes on the label element onto our label. It will apply inline flex and make the position into relative and center the items vertically and changing the cursor appearance into pointer to make this toggle looks like it is clickable. Let's also quickly copy the span classes, which will basically give a little bit of breathing space onto the left side and format the text and also the color. The dark prefix will simply specify what would this text looks like when we are in dark mode. All right, and now let's make the switch. So the switch or toggle really contains two parts, the background and also the round circle 
that can be moved left or right. Let's create the switch background first. We will create a div and add some classes to create an oval with a gray background. This will form the base of our switch. Now the next step is to make this background turn blue when we turn on the toggle and revert it back to gray when we turn off the toggle. We can make use of some windy CSS so the classes modifier to achieve this. So we'll go to the input element and target the next sibling of the input element, which is the div, by using the sibling modifier. And we're saying that when we checked on this input element, we want to apply a blue background to the sibling. And that's it. So now when I tick or untick the box, the div will alternate between a gray or blue background. And that was the base of our switch. Let's create a round circle on the switch now. To do that, we'll need to use pseudo elements and I will recommend to do it using an external CSS file rather than relying on the windy CSS classes. Otherwise, our code would turn into an abomination very quickly. In fact, if you take a look at the code that we just copied, it is actually pretty ugly. As you can see, it is quite long and I don't think any sane human being would enjoy reading that. Anyway, let's write the pseudo element for the switch button in our toggle module CSS file. We will create a new class called toggle and reference it inside our div element. Okay, so our main objective here is to add an after pseudo element, which is a round circle that floats on top of our toggle base. We'll give in a position on absolute and give it a border and also a width and height and make it round. And now you see that the circle is not aligned properly on top of the base. It is because we have yet to hide the checkbox. Let's do it quickly by adding the SR only class onto the input element. And now it looks a lot better than before. We just need to add the animation to move the white circle left and right whenever the switch is clicked. To do that, we'll go to our toggle module CSS file. What we want to do here is to move the white circle to the right when the switch is turned on and that means we can add a checked pseudo class on the input element. So let's create a new class called input. And when the input is checked, we will target the after pseudo element of the toggle and we will set the transform property so we can move the white circle 100% in the X direction while everything else can remain the same. And now back inside our toggle component, we simply need to add the input class to our input element. Once we are done, if we click on the switch now, you can see that the white circle is actually moving left and right. Beautiful. Let's add the animation for the translation. We can do so quite easily with CSS transition. We will apply the transition based on all the CSS properties and we'll make the duration to be 0.15 seconds and the timing function can be set to ease. And if I click on a switch now, you can see a smooth transition between the left and right side. And that is basically it. That to me is a beautiful switch component that I'm more than happy to reuse over and over again across my app. However, if we look at the original code, they do have some sort of rings on the component when we click on the switch. To me, this is not necessary as I'm quite happy with our component already. However, you can add in those CSS classes if you want. All right, that's it for now, and we'll continue to build our app in the next video. I'll see you then. If you would like to see more content, consider supporting us by becoming a member at my website, acadia.io. It is similar to Patreon, but in return, you get a lot of premium tutorials and lessons. If you can't become a member, that's totally fine. We are just happy that you are here. We spend a lot of time and energy to produce high quality videos for you. Feel free to check out our other videos on YouTube and if you can leave a thumbs up, you will really make my day. If you subscribe, I would jump for joy and I'll make more videos for you. Thanks for your support and I'll see you next time.